A Plaguelands Media Production. <laughs> hey everyone, this is Hugh from Plaguelands Media bringing you another book review today. Of course, with a nice bottle of Cass in my hand. That is such a refreshing beer. Now, today I am bringing you a review of a book that has been sitting on my shelf for a long time, not because I didn't want to read it, but just because I've got a lot of other stuff that I want to bring to you, that I want to read. The only reason I read this was because I was in my office at work, I finished the book I was reading, and I needed something else to continue with. They say, never judge a book by its cover, which we all know, um, yeah, sure, I get it. You know, at face value, you shouldn't judge things by the way they look, but the cover of this book was... Fucking pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. Now, I am a fan of the author. I know the author's work. I know the author's work through books, through Netflix. So there is no doubt in my mind that this, this book was going to be uh, a good read. But this cover for Tell No One. What the fuck is that? Who fucking chose that color? Who thought this was a good fucking idea for a cover? Even look at the back of this thing. This is one of the worst book covers I have ever fucking seen in my life. Now, to be fair, the book is great. Don't get me wrong. The author is phenomenal. I highly recommend you go and check out... Um, Anything by Harlan Coben, be it in novel form or the Netflix series that seem to be being made over and over and over and over. They are all great. They're fun. They're suspenseful. They're thrilling. But oh, this fucking cover, are you kidding me with this shit? I've got books lined up to review where the covers are... AI generated art, which pisses me off to no end. I, I fucking hate that shit, don't get me wrong. That's better than this. This. Are you telling me somebody went to the fucking artist of, of a publishing house and said, All right, here's the story, come up with a cover, and they went, there you go. We'll just put the fucking title on this uh, fucking vomit pink orangish cover. Like, are you telling me someone got fucking paid to design this shit? Fuck off! Is what I fucking say. It's a fucking... This cover is a fucking disgrace. The book is fucking awesome, however. So, um... Get away from the cover and, and read this book if you don't want any spoilers. Um, that's the problem with reviewing a Harlan Coben novel is you don't want to spoil it. But in talking about it, you're going to spoil it. it it's inevitable. Uh, so if you don't want any spoilers and you want to read Tell No One for yourself, then... Stop watching this video now, uh, go read it, and once you do read it, go leave a comment in the section below, which I know so many of you do, because I actually just look back over the comments section of recent videos, and I've seen that uh, nobody fucking comments. So, thanks. But, if you want this spoiled, if you want to know why this, this book has a fucking puke cover, uh, but is absolutely fucking thrilling then stick around for the next episode of read a fucking book read a fucking book read a fucking book
people. Okay, so for those of you that have never read a Harlan Coben novel, just understand that this is an author who likes to kind of interweave all of his characters together in this big, big tangled web, almost like you're reading a soap opera. And I am definitely not saying that in a bad way. These books are entertaining as all hell. Now, Tell No One begins with um, the main character, uh, Dr. Beck, uh, David Beck, and his wife, Elizabeth, going to a lake. It's their anniversary or the anniversary of the time they first kissed. Now, they have grown up together, so they've known each other for a long, long, long time. They're in love. They've only been married for about seven months at this point. Now, the lake is owned by David's family. His grandfather actually purchased it. It used to be an abandoned summer house. Oh, summer camp, sorry. And it's private property. But when they were kids and they would explore it, there would be a boogeyman who would, they would kind of see but not see, and they didn't know if he was real or not. Uh, he, he was real. He was actually a, um activist who had blown up a university um, science lab and then kind of fled and has been living in the wilderness ever since. Which is neither here nor there, but it's a part of the story, so fuck it. David and his wife Elizabeth go up to this lake and while they're there, David is going to confess something to her. We don't know what. He never gets the chance because um, after their rendezvous, he is knocked out um, and dumped in the lake and Elizabeth is kidnapped. Presumed dead because... Her body is identified by her father and uncle and branded with a K, which is the signature of this killer called Kilroy, who has been doing this to women. So everyone just assumes she is one of his 14 victims. That's the beginning of the book. That's like the prologue. 18 years, oh, 18, eight years pass and David gets an email from who he presumes is his dead wife. And this kind of sets off a spiral of events. Now, I'm not going to go into every detail, but just know that... Oh, here we go. Hold on. Let me just oh, get my fucking head around this shit. David is a pediatrician. One of the patients he is seeing is the son of a drug dealer. This drug dealer is called Tyrese, who has a son who's a hemophiliac and is blind. Okay. Why does that matter? Because it's part of the fucking story. David's sister, Linda, is married, so to speak, to his former roommate from college, a woman called Shauna. Shauna is... A uh, kind of like a, a big figured model. So she has a lot of powerful contacts and things like that. Why does that matter? It figures into the fucking story. Okay. Jesus, where was I? Uh, Elizabeth's father and uncle were both in law enforcement. It's important to note that Elizabeth worked helping the indigent with this guy called Brandon Scope. Brandon Scope is the son of um, Griffin Scope, who is this wealthy fucking tycoon. And Linda, actually, Linda, who's um, David's sister, works for uh, the one of the kind of 
um, fucking associations that Griffin Scope deals with. Okay, is that everyone? I don't think that's everyone. There's more people fucking coming. But, you know, it, it doesn't fucking matter. Anyway. David gets this email from this mysterious person. He believes that Elizabeth is still alive. And the whole book focuses on him trying to work out what actually happened. Is Elizabeth alive? What is going on? Blah, blah, blah. Okay. So, if you don't want to know, stop the video and go and fucking read the book. But if you want to know the bare basics of it all, I'll give you five seconds. I'm going to take a fucking drink because this thing is giving me a goddamn headache. Okay. You want to know what happened? All right. Here we go. Okay. Oh my god, this is going to be a fucking pain in the ass to to untangle, but I'm going to do my best. So Yeah, I agree. It's fucking shit. Like the story is it's a great story. I'm not saying that I'm just the cat is doing his thing. Okay. So David gets his message from his presumably dead wife. She is not dead. It turns out that Griffin Scope's son Brandon was using this um, foundation to kind of uh, do like bad shit, like drugs and all that kind of stuff. Elizabeth found out and was investigating him. And he discovered what she had kind of worked out and beat the living shit out of her. Now, David was away at a conference at this time. And when he saw her bruises and whatnot, she said she was just in a car accident and she got her best friend to uh, kind of cover for her. And David believed it. Um, Brandon is ultimately killed and his father Griffin believing that Elizabeth was the one that did the murder um, kind of puts a hit out on her with his, his two hitmen one of them being this kind of little American Asian guy that can hit the pressure points and stuff like that um, Elizabeth's father being in law enforcement um, he's on the take, so he actually works for Griffin, and David's father worked for Griffin and was ultimately killed because he was looking into this kind of shit as well. So Elizabeth's father, Hoyt, um, decides to arrange for uh, David to be killed, uh, kind of, and he kills the people that come after Elizabeth, hides their bodies, and they fake Elizabeth's death and she goes into hiding for eight years. So Griffin believes that um, Elizabeth killed his son. So she was also killed an eye for an eye. David survives through the help of the person I mentioned earlier who was hiding in the woods after the um, university lab explosion thing happened. So, David's lived for eight years believing this. His sister and Shauna and kind of everybody. And then Elizabeth has come back. She wants to reconcile with David and wants them to leave together. David doesn't know basically anything. But in order to get out of this mess, he gets the help from Tyrese, the guy with the uh, hemophiliac blind kid. Because that guy's a fucking gangbanger. And everything kind of comes to a head where ultimately he reconciles with his wife. They go to Hoyt. Hoyt takes um, David to Griffin to use him as a scapegoat. Because Griffin now knows that 
whoever killed his son is not dead. And Hoyt basically says, it was me. I killed him, but he doesn't confess to Griffin. He confesses to David, but David's wearing a wire because there's an FBI agent that's kind of in on the whole thing. And there's a manhunt for David because the people have planted shit to frame him for the murder of someone and blah, 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 blah. Um, and Hoyt is killed. Griffin is killed. Everyone's killed. The FBI come in. And David and Elizabeth can live happily ever after. But, twist at the end, we find out that David was the one that killed um, Brandon. Not out of retaliation, but because Brandon had broken into their house that night. Thinking that Elizabeth was there and he was going to kill her so she wouldn't tell anyone. But, Brandon was, uh, but David was actually there. And David was the one that ended up shooting him with uh, his father's gun. Elizabeth had kept all of this secret um, in a safe deposit box. And that night of the lake, at the very beginning, Dave was going to confess the murder to her, but she already knew, so it doesn't really matter. But, yeah, I'm glossing over so fucking much in this book because so much fucking happens, and it would be an hour and a half long video if I went over it. Now... You're all sitting there thinking, Jesus fucking crap, what the fuck? That sounds so fucking stupid. Yeah, it sounds stupid. It's not. This book is really fucking fun. And I'm holding it upside down. This book is fucking great. Any Harlan Coben novel is great. I've never read a bad one yet, and I've read quite a few of them. Um, the Netflix series... If you don't want to read these books, just go and put Harlan Coben into Netflix and fucking watch them. They are phenomenal. The stories are great. Yes, you've got to suspend your disbelief for a little bit of time. I, I shit you not, you've got to look at things and go, oh, come on. Really? That, oh, he would never. Oh, what the? Yeah, you've got to do it. You've got to fucking do it. But it's worth it. It's worth it for the pure fucking entertainment that you are getting from the shows, from the books, from everything. It, that, that's just it. This guy has a talent for keeping you on the edge of your seat. I shit you not... Um, I would say about a week ago, I was reading this and my wife got up and she said, when are you coming to bed? And I looked at the clock and it was 2.30 in the morning and I was still reading this because I had to find out what happened after the previous chapter. And so I just kept reading. I didn't even bother looking at the fucking clock. Now, as a professor, that's not good. I need fucking sleep. That's... The key thing to fucking teaching is sleep a lot and then go and teach your classes. Couldn't put this piece of shit down and I fucking loved every goddamn minute of it. So, cover aside, because look at that. It's fucking awful. One of the worst book covers I've ever fucking seen in my life. One of the best thrillers I've fucking read in my life and I will admit for a Harlan Coben novel it's kind of obvious you kind of know already which is very rare because Harlan Coben has this way of like you look here and he's going over there doesn't matter it really fucking doesn't matter it is just a good book so there you go that's my review of Tell No One by Harlan Coburn, the copy I read with the shit cover. Look at the Kindle cover. The Kindle cover is fucking awesome. What the fuck did they do with this shit? You know what? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna talk about that cover anymore. Just gonna leave it there. If you enjoyed the video, like, subscribe, leave a comment, which no one ever fucking does, but please, 
keep your kind of radar on Plaguelands Media because we have something fucking exciting in the works. I'm not going to spoil it. <coughs> Animated series. <coughs> um, but, yeah, tell your friends, tell your colleagues, tell your co-workers. You know what? Go outside. The first person that you fucking see on the street, tell them Plaguelands Media on YouTube. Come on. Just fucking do it. Anyway, I'm going to leave it right there. So, with that said, stay safe. Have a fantastic rest of your day. But, most importantly of all, and I cannot stress this enough, do this as a favor to me. Like, just do this as a favor to the person whose video you just watched. Go out there and read a fucking book, people. Even if it has a bad fucking cover.